25, a familiar, familiar verse, amen, and uh, one of my favorite verses in all the Word of God, I got a lot of favorite verses from the Word of God, amen, but uh, it's good, so we're going to look at, uh, get my page through here, and so we're going to get Psalm 109, uh, 119, verse 105, and uh, look, I trust the Lord to give us a present, where we are, uh, Kaylee's been asking and asking and asking when was Sunday school going to start back up again? And uh, but she's been she she thinks this class is boring, <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, she, she lets me know every Sunday that your class is boring, and uh, <laughs> and uh, because and, and so um, and so the in fact so she said uh, oh, I said well it's August we're starting up August first and so when we started early this week and, and, and able to do it she was so excited and she I walked into a classroom. And, and, um, and Teresa said, have fun. And she turned around and Teresa goes, yes, you have fun being bored. <laughs> <laughs> <She did. laughs> and, and, and out of the mouth of oh, baby. And, and I, taught, I taught the uh, young people, the, the kids, Wednesday night. And, um, and I told Kaylee on the way to church, I said, I'm teaching the kids, um, you know, little children things Wednesday night. And so, and she goes, oh, no. <laughs> This is going to be a this is going to be a horror show, and uh, I said I said what's well, going to be a horror show? And she said you never taught kids before. And I said sweetie, I've taught kids for almost twenty years, <laughs> well over twenty years. I work with youth and children, and she and so then we did the, the class, and uh, and so and did my some of the things. Did I mentioned now my sermon about the children? And I preached on that a couple weeks ago and did some of those things and did some crazy stuff. As we did that, as we were leaving, um, and she was laughing, and, and on the way home she said, "Day Day, I didn't know you could be so funny when you talk. <laughs> you need to be that funny in Sunday school." <laughs> so, so I, they, I am. Amen. <laughs> so, so, I just don't do crazy kids stuff, amen. All right, Psalm one nineteen. This is all share that it's a blessing how little kids can kind of stir your heart, and, and um, I understand that her being in here. Board, but you know, so she, she was so happy to go in there, just so smiling, and just so glad to see the children. Hey, I'm glad we're doing things for kids again. Amen. It's a blessing. Yeah. Very, very good lesson. Uh, Psalm 119, verse 105. I oh, love this verse. Many of you can quote this verse. But Psalm 119, verse 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn, and I will perform it, and I will keep thy righteous judgments. I am afflicted very, uh, uh, very much. Quickeneth me, O Lord, according to Thy word. Except I beseech Thee, the free will offering of my mouth, O Lord. Um, except I beseech Thee, the free will offering of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me Thy judgments. My soul is continually in mine hand, my hand. Yet do I not forget Thy law. The wicked have laid a snare for me. Yet I err not from thy precepts. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever. For they are my rejoicing. They are, they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my, uh, my heart to perform thy statutes away, uh, yeah, away uh, even unto the end. All right? Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God's blessing upon the lesson today. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus who died on Calvary's cross for our sins. And Lord, as we stand and teach today, I pray, Lord, that you'd fill us with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for all the wonderful blessings you've given to us. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to stand and teach this dear class. And Father, I pray, Lord, that you take the words that we said today that, Lord, won't just be a Sunday school lesson, but, Lord, they'll be make an impact in life and uh, uh, things that we can grow on and draw closer to you, Lord. Father God, I come to church today to hear from you. Father, I pray for our pastors who preach today. I pray, Lord, you speak to us through the preaching of your word. I pray, Lord, for the children that are here, Lord, the children ministry. Lord, we pray, most importantly, Lord, that the, the gospel be given to these kids, that they'll trust you and, and, and live a life that glorifies you. And, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for this church and this love for you. And, Father God, I pray, Lord, that you'd stir our hearts. Lord, I love this place, and I pray, Lord, that you'd continue to bless, Lord, in a great and mighty way. Thank you, Lord, for all the, the, Lord, the blessings you've given to us. Lord, the requests that were made known today, I pray, Lord, you'd be in the midst of that. And Father God, again, we just thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, of course, we're going to uh, meant to write the Hebrew word up here again, but it looks kind of like a two. Kind of, well, depending on where you see it, it's got a weird 
look like that, comes kind of around like that, and then darts back like that, sort of like kind of like a weird looking tooth, and I probably butchered that, but it's none, N-U-N, none, is the, the Hebrew letter. And there I told it that's all the significance we need today, amen. It's just the Hebrew letter called none, amen. And there's no significant. Next week, we're willing, we're here next week. Uh, the, the word does have a significance with the Hebrew letter has a significance with the, the, the thing we're gonna talk about. But none is the Hebrew letter here. And in verse number 105, it deals with God's word, amen. We're gonna look at four things, Lord willing, that we have time because I got a lot of information to try to cover today. day. Uh, four things, the, the illumination, the, the illuminating power of God's word, the life-giving power of God's word, the keeping power of God's word, and the changing power of God's word. In these psalms, we're we'll look at some things. First off, we we'll look at the illuminating power of God's word. God's word is a lamp, is a light, amen. Now, when I was a kid, I remember going uh, years ago. We were down um, in uh, uh, Mobile, Alabama. My grandfather took us out floundering, and um, and we'd go out at night, and you walk through, the, you wade through the ocean, and you have a spear. Well, he had the spear. I was probably six or seven years old. And, 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 you know, he had that light and he had, you know, and it, was, it must have been some kind of kerosene like I remember the smell of it, amen. And, and, uh, and it was dark, red light, oh, it was dark. And uh, I said, Pop all Bill, Pop all Bill. That light goes out. I was scared because I think, you know, the waves coming on us and walking through. And I remember just being petrified as a little kid walking around in the, in the water. Uh, uh, that light goes out, it's going to be dark. He said, the light ain't going to go out. And I thought, well, if the wave comes up here and knocks the light out, you're going to be dark. He said, he said well, there's oh, where our, our stuff's at. I have a you know, kerosene torch, you know, you know, those Coleman lanterns over there, burning. We were just launching you to see where that's at. He said, we'll just walk back to that. That light will be our guide back to where we need to get to. Well, what if both lights go out? <laughs> so he said, this, one's, this one guides where, where we're going. That was a guide to get back. And, and years later, I, thought, I remember that. I mean, that's God's word, amen. It remembers this verse here. Every time I hear this verse, I think about that little story where me and my grandfather got floundering. It says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. God's word illuminates and lights our way. We are to walk in a path of life. Without the Bible, we wouldn't know where to step. Amen. Wouldn't know where to step. We wouldn't know where to go. And, and the Bible says that we're to walk certain ways. Of course, we covered some of this uh, when we first started class back uh, years ago, but we're to walk worthily. According to Ephesians chapter number four, verse number one, it says, I therefore a prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthily of the vocation wherein you are called. So God wants us to walk worthily. Amen. God's called us to a purpose. God's called us to a job and we are to do that job worthily. We're, we're to be to give the very best that we can, whatever we do. Um, whatsoever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Amen. When I go to work, um, I do it for God's honor and God's glory. I don't do it because I'm getting a paycheck. I don't do it because uh, they're hiring me. I'm doing, I look at my job at Chick-fil-A as a ministry, as a part of my glorifying the Lord. Amen? And when we do that, we're to glorify God in our life, in our vocation. Now, that's not just something we use it for ministry, but everything you do in your life. When I'm cutting the grass, I do it for the God's honor, God's glory, and God's purpose. Amen. Everything you do, from cleaning the house, from doing different things there, if we have the mindset that we're doing it for God, it changes our outlook on everything we do. We're gonna walk worthily of the vocation where we are called. Give God the very best we have. We're gonna walk uprightly. Isaiah 54, uh, 7, verse number two says, and ye shall enter into peace, and they shall rest their, uh, they shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. And so we're gonna walk in an upright, that means we're to be above reproach, amen? There should not be things in our life that, you know, uh, when, when someone thinks of us, there shouldn't be a negative thought about someone. You know, they may not like our stand or certain things, but our character should be, be, be above reproach. We should be upright, amen? So we're to walk uprightly. We're to walk in the light. Pastor mentioned this the other night, when, or the other day when he was preaching. And he said, but if we walk in, in John, 1 John chapter number 1, verse number 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. One of my favorite verses on the Bible. And we got a lot of favorite verses in the Bible, amen. Good verse. So we're to walk in the light uh, because he's in the light, amen. And in the light of God's word, we're to walk in the light. We're to know what we're doing. You know, God's word is to illuminate our path and to walk what we do. You know, doing all this to get to a point here, amen. Uh, we're to walk humbly. Uh, I mentioned a couple weeks ago, pride's a horrible enemy, amen. But we're to walk humbly. Micah 6, 8 says, he that showeth, uh, uh, he hath showed thee, O man, what is good, 
and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. We are to walk humbly with the Lord. Amen. Uh, God resists the proud. Amen. I told a story about a preacher I knew one time in Bible college, and uh, he'd go off and preach. Um, you know, it's good good experience when you start off to call nursing homes and, and to call funeral funeral you know uh, uh, homes and uh, say, hey, if someone doesn't have a uh, preacher and needs someone to preach, I can come preach for him. And that's going to minister God's people, minister people, and get the gospel out. Well, he did that, but you know, and, and the funeral director said, look, okay, I got you know several funerals today, this one here, so you got about 25 minutes, you know, a message about 25 minutes in the morning. He goes, how dare him tell me how long I'm gonna preach God's word? He goes, I got there for almost an hour. He goes, that funeral home never called me. He goes, that funeral director never called me back again. I wonder why. Because you, you, you're prideful, amen. <laughs> you know, and God resists the proud, amen. And so we're to be humble and walk humbly. In him. That's how that's the direction God wants us to do. But it is impossible to walk in any of those ways without the word of God. Mm -hmm. It is impossible to walk in any of those ways without the word of God. We walk in a dark and perilous world. And sometimes we don't know where our steps are going to fall. Yeah. Amen. To be perfectly honest, we don't know our steps are going to fall. But God's word is not just a light down the road. Out there, I'm in the ocean with my grandfather, and we looked back, and I kept looking back to see where that little lamp was at, and we could always see it. And I knew that I was worst case, I could just run back to that lamp and get back to where our stuff was at, right where the cars were parked at. But that lamp that he had with him was showing where we stepped. And show those fish wherever he could spear. Amen. And it was showing where we were going, make sure we didn't step on them, we shouldn't step on them. You know, and, and God's word is light. We walk in a perilous time, and God's word is a light, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And we are thankful. God shows us not just a, a, where, where our feet are step, but what direction where we're going. Um, the Bible teaches us what's right and wrong. Amen. It's simple. The Bible teaches us what's right and what's wrong. There's some things that will come up in our life that's wrong. And if we know the word of God, we can have things. things. Yeah, I tell people many times, it's not what I think about something. One day at work, a guy that they're talking about, um, <laughs> we have interesting conversations with people at work. But some, one guy goes, David, hey, what do you think about gay marriage? Well, my opinion doesn't matter. Amen. It's what God's word says. Amen. Because then it takes it away from what I think. I'm going with what God's word says. They have a problem with what, I, what I'm going to say. They have a problem with God's word. And I give them scripture what the Bible says about things. Amen. And there's no such thing as gay marriage. Right. Marriage is marriage. Mm -hmm. Amen. Pure and simple. Marriage is marriage. There's no gay marriage. God's against homosexuality. Amen. And God gets the wickedness of that. And so when you start adding little things there, you know, lost the conversation. But God, this is what God's word says. The other day they're talking about, you know, someone came out and said, hey, what's your sign? I was said, David, do you know what your sign is? And I said, I know what it is because I had an aunt that told me what it was, and, and uh, but I pay no mind to that stuff whatsoever because it's weird. And I said, I, unfortunately, I do know what it is. I said, why are you asking? He said, I was just curious how many people actually know what their sign is. He said, because I didn't know what mine was. He said, somebody came in there and asked me, and, and I said, I didn't have a clue. And I said, well, good for you, amen. <laughs> and uh, he said, what's the big deal about this stuff, too? And I, you know, what, what's your opinion about the Zodiac stuff? I said, my opinion about the zodiac doesn't matter. It's what God's word says, and God's word says we're going to be observer of times, amen. And we're to avoid witchcraft and things of that nature, and that's what that stuff is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But see, I put it there, it's not what I think, because if, I, if it's what I think about something, we can get an argument and butt heads. And I can get my feelings hurt, and they don't agree with me, amen. <laughs> but if it's with God's word, if you disagree with God's word, you don't, the problem's not with me, me and you, the problem's with you and God, amen. And uh, listen, I, I, I get, you know, we get to talk about politics. And I have my opinions about politics. And if somebody else has a different opinion about politics. We might butt heads. But when it comes to the things of God's word, it's what God's word said. Well, it, as far as I'm concerned, it's over with it. <laughs> the Bible says this is wrong. We see what the Bible says. And your opinion doesn't matter. My opinion doesn't matter. Again, it's what God's word says about things. Amen. Hey, I like college football. I think Georgia is, you know, is a wonderful, great team. If you don't like the University of Georgia, the media won't have a problem with it. But that's my opinion versus your opinion, amen? That's not, you won't find it in the Bible, amen? And I look, amen? <laughs> so, but, uh, but God's word is God's word, amen? And so this, well, this is not what my opinion thinks. So it teaches us what's right and wrong. It's a guide uh, for us to avoid the snares. When we talk about snares, we get to verse 10. 
But God's word is a, a, a God that was avoid the snares in life. Hey, there are snares set out for us. There are snares. Especially in this day and age in this world. They, if you want to try to trek, trip, trip us up, want to try to trap us, they want to try to get us to say something or, or get us to, 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 to go against ways. But if we follow God's word, we can worry about the snares. And we'll get more, we'll get verse 10 and talk more about the snares. God's word, of course, is, is instruction for right living, amen? Mm -hmm. uh, how to live right. By the light of God's word, by God's holy word, we understand the truth of the Trinity, the truth of the deity and the humanity of Christ. Amen. Thanks the world mocks and scoffs that. We understand the truth. We understand the truth of our sin. We understand the truth of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross of Calvary for our sins. <laughs> I know that through scripture, amen. Not because, listen, hey, I get excited when I think about God's word because all we know about Jesus comes from God's word. Yeah. It comes from the Bible. And if we don't, and when we put, we're in a day and age now where the Bible is losing its importance in Christian circles. That it's not that, you know, that the people, the preachers say, well, we want to get there and actually preach the Bible. We want to say things that's relevant. And they use the Bible as like a reference book for things. No, God's word is a living, breathing book. Amen. It's alive. It speaks to our hearts. I've mentioned this before. I can read a novel and then I'm done and go back and try to read the novel again later and it doesn't have the same impact because I know it's going to happen. But I know it's going to happen when I read the book of, when I, I know David's going to beat Goliath, but it still thrills my soul. It still excites me. Amen? I know the Red Sea is going to part. Amen. And I know Moses is going to, you know, it's not going to be killed by Pharaoh. I know, though, yeah, I know what's going to happen, but it still thrills my soul. Amen. And I still find new and fresh things in it each time I read it, amen. I know when Christ is buried that he's going to raise up on the third day, amen. I know that's going to happen because I read the book before, but each time I read it, it still thrills my soul. It excites me. I know that the Holy Ghost is going to descend upon him on the day of Pentecost, but each time I read it, I get excited and get thrilled up about what God's doing. And the more we read God's word, the more excited we get about it, the more thrilled we get because it's a light into our life. It shows us where to go. It shows us our life, amen. We understand the truths of death. We understand the truths of the, of, the, of, the, of the church. We understand the truth of the return of Jesus Christ. He's coming again. You know how I know Christ is coming again? Because the word of God says he's coming again. That's all the evidence I need. Amen. You know, uh, I believe in creation. I reject evolution. And I, I don't want to downplay anybody. I, I get books. I get this book by um, what the uh, magazine Hacks. Uh, by a creation institute, um, um, you know, about you know, Christian, you know, Christian scientists who talk about you know, uh, creation and, and bring evidence, and, I, and that's great, that's wonderful. But I don't believe in I don't believe in creationism because of what they say. Mm -hmm. I believe in creation because the Bible says God in the beginning, God, yeah. Amen. Uh, God created the heavens and the earth, Amen. God spoke the world into existence, and I believe that because the Word of God says it, Amen. And I believe that there's a hell, not because I've ever heard any kind of evidence of hell. You know, those stories that came out in the 70s where something were in Russia, they dug a hole all around the so far, and they could stick a microphone down there, and it was uh, uh, you know, 12 degrees, and they heard screaming and wailing and stuff. That's eh, more than likely a hoax. Yeah. I'm almost pretty sure I'm, I would go 98, 99.9%, that's a hoax. Some TV, because it came out through some kind of crazy radio or TV evangelist start promoting that thing and selling it. But you know what? I don't believe in hell because of something like that. I believe in hell because the Bible says it's hell. Yeah. I believe in heaven not because I read some book about some person that died and went to heaven and came back and told his story about it. I believe in heaven because God's word says there's a heaven, amen? That's right. I believe in, hey, I believe in the angels not because I ever saw an angel. I probably have seen angels. You may entertain them unawares before, amen? Mm -hmm. But, uh, I believe in that because God's word says it's there, amen? And when you believe that, you, I don't need evidence of this world. I believe God's word, amen? And so we want to put our faith and trust in God's word. And so I know Christ is coming again because he said he's coming again, amen? I know he's coming again. Praise God for that. So we see the the, the, the illuminating power of God's word. There could be a whole lot more we could say on that, but I want to try to get through this here. The life-giving power of God's word, verses 106 through 108. Look at verse 106, it says this. I have sworn and I will perform it. I, I, uh, I, have, some place here. I have sworn and <coughs> will perform it. I will keep thy righteous judgments. Now listen to this. 
the psalmist says, I've sworn it, I've sworn and will perform it and will keep thy righteous judgments. You understand most people, I remember a story I was reading when I was preparing to this um, about a man, I don't remember all the details, I didn't write down, for some reason the boy just brought back to my mind, amen. Um, <laughs> this guy was so intent, he, he, he got to church and got so stirred up that he wanted to live for God that he went home and he knelt down and he wrote out a promise to God. He wrote it, you know, laying there, he goes, Lord, I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to stop doing that. I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to stop doing that. I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to, you know, all these different things. You know, you know, I don't know all the details, but but he said all these different things that, you know, Lord, it doesn't please you. He wrote a big little list and he tried to do it. Sooner or later, he, start, he messed up. Little ways. Little ways and felt bad, felt horrible. I'm just a horrible person. I'm wicked. It's just how bad, how bad am I, the person? I'm trying to live for God, I can't do it. Then it got worse. He, he, he started messing with bigger things, what he thought were bigger things. And got bigger. And the more and more he tried to live for God, the more and more he failed. And you know what? Sometimes our Christian life, the more and more we try to live for God, the more and more we fail. That person finally went up on the roof of his house, took that promise to God, cut it up in little small pieces because he'd read it every day. He cut that promise out of the God that you're today. And he said, Lord, I can't do this. You're going to have to do it for me. He threw it off in the air. This promise belongs to you. He threw it off in the air. And we cannot live for God in our own power. That's right. Thousands upon thousands of Christians today are trying to live for God in their own power, in their own ability. Most people live for God in their own power, their own ability, and fail their Christian life. And the Christian life becomes a chore. A burden, a burden, it becomes a dreadful chore to try to live for God because they're trying to do it in their own power. We have a list of do's and don'ts. Don't do, don't do this and don't do that and don't do that. You know, we got to dress a certain way. Make, we have to, to not, don't, not watch this. Don't listen to that. Don't, you know, do all these things of do's and don'ts. And listen, I don't believe we ought to have standards. I'm not preaching against it. I'm saying, but you cannot keep standards. You cannot keep the commandments. You can, in your own power and your own ability, you cannot do it. You will fail. Mm -hmm. And we look at some of those Christian life as we, you know, instead of being a narrow path, we it's a narrow. We understand you know, the narrow path and those finding Christ. But we look at the Christian walk as a tightrope, and we're trying to keep that tightrope just going. And, and and because we got so many rules and things in our life, that the Christian life instead of being a joy, instead of being peaceful. Instead of being glorious, it becomes a chore. It becomes a burden because I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do this. And sometimes when we're teaching kids, and I'm very careful about Kaylee, I don't want to have a list of do's and don'ts and do's and don'ts and do's and don'ts. When I say we don't do this, why? Because we're listening, we want to honor God. And we and it's hard for us to try to do this. Because sometimes kids get the mindset of do's and don'ts. And, do, and that's the whole Christian life for them. It becomes a chore. It becomes burdensome. And when they get old enough to leave, they leave. I've seen it happen. Because I'm not going to live like that. And guess what? I don't want to live like that. I want to have the, but see, we, we, and when we do that, when we put those chores in us, I've sworn it, I will perform it, I will do this. But that becomes a chore to live. The Christian life becomes, the Christian life becomes a burden. And God never designed our Christian walk to be burdensome. He designed our Christian walk to be joyful. A walk of peace. A walk of love, a walk of joy and happiness. And there's great service in serving the Lord. Now, I've been in churches before and I've gone preach some places and I've um, preached, get there and, and just and preach. You know, and you've heard, the, you, know, the, you know, don't do this and don't do and, and there's no, there's no encouragement, there's no, no love. And I see people live the Christian life and it's like, well, I don't, I don't do you know, all the things they don't do and don't do, don't do. But I'm glad to be a Christian. It doesn't look like you're glad to be a Christian. Enjoy your Christian life, amen. Enjoy what God's given to us. Enjoy the life of living. Look, how so how? If God listen, does God want us to make oaths? Yes, God wants us to make oaths. And God wants us to swear and to perform to do it and, and, and to keep his righteous judgments. Verse 106. God wants us to do that, amen. Well, how do we do that? Look at the next verse, verse 107. Verse 107 says this: I am afflicted. That means I cannot do this. Amen? 
in this world there's going to be affliction. We talk about affliction over and over again in, in this psalm. That there's affliction. I am afflicted very much. Look at the next two words. Quicken me. Quicken me. Lord, you got to make me alive. Lord, I can't live the Christian life apart from you living it through me. I can't love my neighbors unless God loves them through me. Amen? You understand? We have to wake up every morning. Paul says, I die daily. Now, he's not talking about he physically dies daily, but he dies to himself daily. There are times people get on my nerves. I know you find it hard to believe. When I go to work, sometimes people just rub me the wrong way, man. We had a lady come in, we, we, our dining room is still closed. And so, but the employees go there and have their break. But the, you can go in to play now and you can buy food. You have, the, the, the outside eating's opened up, but you, know, you can't eat it inside yet because we're still trying to, the corporate doesn't want that to happen yet. We, we, we got, hopefully by the next couple of weeks, we'll open up limited inside seating. But yesterday, this lady bought something at the counter. And so this guy, or no, this guy, he bought something at the counter. He comes in on break. And he walks by every table, and every table's got a plaque on it that says this table's closed. Things are roped off. He walked, I mean, he walked every table and comes back and goes, Oh, I can't eat inside now? Well, you big dummy, no, you can't eat. <laughs> I didn't say that, but my mind was like, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, Don't bother me about me. <laughs> no, Lord, forgive me for that attitude. I didn't say that. I said, sir. <laughs> but uh, sometimes some people just say things and it rubs you the wrong way, man. We have a bunch of cars backed up all the way to you know uh, Route 10 in the drive through and the guy come in and the doors and he said, Hey, do y'all know y'all's drive through's backed up? Yes, we know our drive through's backed up. <laughs> <laughs> well, he walked up and said, Hey, do y'all have, have a crispy chicken sandwich here? Yes, we have crispy chicken sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> it's Chick-fil-A, we have chicken sandwich. <laughs> and you want to say, Duh! <laughs> but sometimes people rub you the wrong way. And if you let your flesh control you, you cannot live the Christian life. That's right. You cannot be joyous all the time. You cannot be peaceful all the time. You can't. But with Christ doing it through you, you can. Amen. And so Paul says he dies daily. He says we are to be spirit filled to live the Christian life. We are to be spirit spirit filled means spirit controlled. When we got saved, we received the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost lives inside of us and dwells us. But to be spirit filled means that we are to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Now, how are we controlled by the Holy Spirit? Ephesians 5.18 says, And be not drunk with wine, where is in excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. Now, you understand, after that, we got time. Turn to Ephesians 5. I want to show you something. We'll come back to Ephesians 5. Should have marked this on the Bible. Ephesians chapter 5. Verse number 18 says this. And be not drunk with wine where is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Okay, then it goes on and says this. Look at verse number 19. We're going to read all these, but you know these, these verses. Verse number 19. Speak to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your hearts. So being filled with the Spirit in this context, if you are filled with the Spirit, you'll speak in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart unto the Lord. Giving thanks always in all things. Uh, to the Father uh, uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if we're spiritual, we'll be thankful. Amen? Thankful for what God's given to us. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord. Uh-oh, spiritual people submit to each other, right? Amen? Wives submit to your own husbands as in the Lord. Husbands love husbands uh, for the husband's the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior to buy. Therefore, the church is to be subject to Christ, so that the wives be subject to their own husbands, Verse 25, husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. I think it goes on and says, um, chapter number six, it says, uh, children, uh, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Again, still in the same context of being spirit filled, submitting to your children. Um, uh, fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, verse number four, six, four. Uh, so it tells about how fathers should be spirit filled when they come to raise, raise to their kids. Verse number five, servants be, uh, servants be obedient to them that are your masters. Talking about employer, employees being servant to those that are your masters. And it goes on and talks about, so it talks about those that are under authority and those in authority. Being in submission to God, and that's being a sign of being spirit-filled. Amen? Now look at Colossians chapter number three. Colossians chapter number three. Now, 
spirit-filledness in Ephesians speaks about singing psalms, being thankful, uh, the right kind of submission, husbands and wives submission, you know, uh, wives submit to their husbands, husbands love your wives, uh, children obey your parents, fathers don't provoke your children anymore. That's the right kind of submission and the spirit being spirit filled. We see the almost the identical list here in Ephesians, I mean in, in Colossians chapter number three. Look at verse, you know, um, look at verse number 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing uh, with grace in your hearts unto the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God. And the, and the father by him. Wives, submit you to your own husbands as unto the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing unto God. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey uh, your masters in all things according to the flesh, not thy service or, or as man pleasers, but in the singleness of, of heart, fearing God. That's the same list almost. But in Ephesians, it talks about being spirit-filled. In Colossians, it talks about being the Word of Christ-filled. So when you have the Word of God in you, the Holy Spirit can use God's Word to control you. Amen? And so to be spirit-filled is to be Word-filled. Is to have the Word of God dwelling in us. Amen? Uh, the charismatics walk around and talk about being spirit-filled and jibber-jabber and all that stuff. I'm talking about bow tie who stole my Honda and all that other garbage that they do and rolling around on the ground barking like a dog and all that kind of stuff. That's not spirit-filled. Spirit-filled is being obedient to God's Word and having God take His Word. That's why it's important to read our Bible. Mm -hmm. Listen, if the Bible's not in you, Brother Dolls, mm -hmm. how's the Holy Spirit going to use it? Right. Amen? There are times, sometimes, where all of a sudden a verse that I read, you know, or a study or something I've done years ago comes back to my mind. I go, why did I think about that? And all of a sudden temptation comes up or something. Oh, maybe I'm going through some kind of pain or difficulty or, or sadness or something, and the Lord will bring back something to my mind that I studied or, 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 or years ago. But if it wasn't in my heart, Holy Spirit would have used it. Get the, the more word of God you have in your body, the more word of God you put in, the more likely things are God. The Holy Spirit, yeah. you don't ever forget it, amen? Yeah. Verses you hear in the past and all of a sudden come back clear, clarity in times of virtue when you need it, amen? If you're submissive to the will of God and say, Lord, control me, the, God, the Holy Spirit will use the word of God to help us control us, amen? So to be spirit-filled is to be word-filled. Have the word of God in us. It ain't done some supernatural thing that we pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. Listen, we should pray to be spirit filled, but it's not some supernatural power that overcomes us. If we're not feeding it, it ain't going to happen. Amen. Getting God's word, read the Bible. It's not just a do and 